Welcome back to Edinley for our latest episode of Box 2 in partnership with Best Western Hotels GB, supporting local, proudly independent hotels. Welcome back to Box 2, myself, Jamie Jones Buchanan, in partnership with Best Western's Hotels GB, and we've got a very special guest this week, the iconic, legendary Sir Kevin Sinfield, OBE, mate, that's probably not a justified introduction, but I'll be here for half an hour. He'd get really embarrassed and angry and we won't get to talk about what we're here to talk about, which is your new book. You've had a book launch this week. It's been a great week over with Sally Nugent at St Anne's Church in Manchester on Tuesday. Um, with myself on Wednesday at York Race Course, I had a wonderful time there. We had the hottest time you've ever seen in your life, just dripping buckets of sweat uh, beside the biggest glass window you've ever seen. Um, Good crowd though, 300 nearly. Have you enjoyed the week, Kev? Yes, yes I have. Um, it's been great because we've spent a lot of time with people who like, are either really interested in, in rugby, yep. or they're really interested in Rob and M&D, or they're really interested in running. So <laughs> but a real mix of everything. Um, but yeah, it's been a great week. Like, uh, as you know, I didn't, I didn't want to write a book, I never did. Um, but to be able to do a book and it not be purely about rugby, which is what I wanted to avoid, yeah. um, it's, it's been really good. And, and like I said, the support's been outstanding and, and very, very kind and humbling. When you finished playing your playing career, you'd achieved more than most of us mere mortals in maybe two or three lifetimes. And uh, everybody wanted you to write a book. If you remember, the Leeds fans were really excited to get this picture book. And uh, me and Ryan Bailey worked too because it pretty much suited our reading IQ. Got a picture book there. But you jumped in and you've done the real thing. It must be really gratifying, Kev, to have uh, finally done it. But why now and why this? Why did you decide to do the real thing? Yeah, I, it, it's funny because uh, the last three and a half years since, I suppose, Rob being diagnosed yeah. um, has shown me that I need to take some more risk and make myself a bit more uncomfortable. So um, Rob going through what he was going through gave me a whole host of perspective. And I never wanted to do a book about just rugby. I never wanted a kiss and tell. I never wanted to share dressing room stories about lads I'd played with and I think the world of and gone through 13 years as a captain and kept everything as quiet as we can and that inner sanctum type stuff. To then finish playing and go, right, everything's out there. I, I didn't want to do it. And I thought, if we're going to do it, it's got to tell the truth, but needed a bit more than the rugby stuff. And yeah. I suppose in many ways, the last three years, there's been a fair shift in my life. Um, and a lot of that has been inspired by Rob. So um, but Rob's idea to write the book. Um, and I, I am glad I've done it. Like At times it was tough going through some of those older memories, some of those tougher memories, uh, but also really rewarding as well at times when you're talking about some of the great times and the friendships and um, some important moments in my life. I really enjoyed reading it, mate. Just uh, that mosaic in tandem with Rob Burrow's book as well, you know, talking about very similar things. And seeing it from different angles, we'll touch on that uh, in, in a few moments, but the picture there, Polly, looking sharp in that picture. Yeah, it's... Looking sharp. Uh... The publishers liked that one, <laughs> they did, and uh, they said to me we'd quite like to use this one, so I was like, great, well that is actually from 10 years ago, so I'm like, if you're telling me I still look like that, I'll take it. Mate, you're doing well, you're going alright, you're looking after yourself. Um, really quickly, uh, I, I coloured this in in about two days, reading's not for everybody, but the, the audiobooks come out as well this week, um, a lot of people like to run, jog listen to audiobooks in the car. I think it's a really funny story and worth talking about. The, the people that narrate, record it for you at the studio, they ask you, ask you to book off four days. Um, but you didn't have time, did you? Just, just give us an insight. Yeah, so, so they asked me to, we just come out of the Six Nations, and um, they said, we need four days from you. And I said, I don't have four days. And I wasn't contracted to, to read the audiobook, so typically they like the author to do it, but... Um, they often use actors or other people to come in who sound like you. And um, I said, I ain't got four days, I can do it in two. And they're like, nobody does it in two. <laughs> so I went, well, look, 
I'll stay, I'll cut, get, get there as early as you want and I'll, f and I'll go all day and I'll finish it, however late that needs to be. We'll get it done in two days. I was like, trust me, we'll get this done. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I did it in a day. Typical, so, typical Kevin so. Sinfield. It's a long day, but I did it in a day. Mate, I started, I've, in fact, I'm about a quarter of the way through the book and I've only had one sitting, uh, travelling along M62, of course. Uh, and the message behind it, mate, there's love, friendship, camaraderie in there. For me, there's, there's an overarching element of leadership as well. I think you'll pick whatever you want to pick out or whatever moment you are in your life for whatever reason. But you mentioned earlier, a multitude of people have come to your book launch, whether it be for running M&D or, or rugby league. But it's one of those books that anybody could potentially pick up and, and learn something. Because we're all in a people business. And that purpose and, and belonging and being a part of a team, a community, for me is what really stands out and transcends rugby league. It's not just a sports book, Kev, is it? Well, well thank you. Um, I didn't just want a sports book, so I'm delighted you say that. What I wanted a book that was different to what had been on the shelves before. Yeah. Um, and I'm, when I say that, you know, that's not to disrespect any other sports person or rugby player, not at all. I just felt it was going to do it, it needed to be different. You know, I'm, I'm not the type of guy who'll share some of those dressing room stories. I, I don't want to. I don't think it's fair, so it had to be different. And I think what people have done in the last three and a half years for that MND community, they were beautiful, by the way. Like They're the yeah. toughest people you'll ever meet. They're the best of us. They've got spirit, they've got humour, and Rob is right at the forefront of that. But if I was going to do the book and be absolutely all in, then it needed to be about other things than rugby, which means, I think to understand where we've got to this last couple of years and what the team were able to do with the challenges, you needed to understand you know, my life as a youngster, the rugby stuff, and then what has happened since then. Um, last time you were at Edinburgh, I think, Kev, was the Rob Rowley's Marathon. And in many ways, that's the fruit of the seeds that were planted in the challenges there. You have your challenges, you go and, and raise money and awareness for M&D, and it's, it's wonderful, covered by the BBC all the way through. And we'll talk about uh, the uh, vote for an award as well, at the back end, how you can get involved in that and support Rob and Kev. Um, but ultimately, this was an opportunity for the community to come in and be a part of that story. It wasn't just a marathon, a race, it was for people to be a part of a narrative, a story. How humbled were you to be a part of that day? For me as a Leeds lad, 27 years, I've never seen anything like it. There was a really iconic moment with you and Rob at the end of it, but the old day itself, how would you sum it up? Yeah, I, I think when we went after putting a marathon together in Rob's name, I couldn't have dreamt that it had been as special and as good as it was. Couldn't have dreamt there'd be that many people doing it. Couldn't have dreamt there were that many inspired to take on the first marathon. Like, that is huge. 55% is numbers that you won't see. Um, to raise all that money for different charities, for people to understand it was about friendship. There's no marathon like it in the world. There's, there's marathons, everyone's chasing a PB. Everyone wants um, to get a best time and everyone's looking for a track that's flat. But actually, this marathon weren't about that. You're not going to run a PB in Leeds. Like, that isn't the strap line. The strap line is, get ready, it's going to be tough. Even when a lot of people are going to have to fight and scrap. <laughs> but we'll show the best of Leeds. And we saw the the people lining the streets, the volunteers, Run For All, Leeds Rhinos, Leeds City Council, all our old boys who've come out and, and, had, a, and had a trot round. That, there was a spirit about the community and vast majority of that are running for M&D charities, but also running for all sorts of different things. And I was just so humbled and to spend over four hours with Rob, pushing him around, um, was, you know, we've, we've wanted to do it for some time. Yeah. And yeah, it was a very, very special day. And, and in the end, like the end, I, I know it's, um, People have spoke about the end a fair bit and um, I've been asked about it a lot. Like The plan wasn't to carry him over the line. We ended up there because of how tough it was and yeah. how much it took out of both of us. But we actually had to get Rob out the chair. You know, For those who, were, who ran the marathon would have seen at times us getting Rob out the chair yeah. and um, almost trying to make sure he was comfortable and looked after and cared for. And, what what it looked like at the end was what I thought the marathon was built upon, which was 
friendship and love and support and caring for each other and um, do you know Rob tells me it's one of the most special moments he's been a part of and and for us like and you know this we've had many a good day where we've had a, a really good trophy lift like that's that was as good as any trophy lift oh, man. We, oh, yeah. do, do you know and, and actually um, to share in that moment with him for people to see um, that friendship um, but like I've said a number of times that friendship isn't unique to Rob and I as you know this yep. that core group of players I've had that friendship right the way through and you, you'd all do and I've done what you've done for Rob and I know at any point that if anybody you know falls on some difficult times the Batman sign goes up and we'll all come out and do what we've got to do well, some people ask me if I miss playing and, and I don't miss playing at all because I'm still with that group with Magsy last night see JP all the time you know, Kyle, Rob yourself, it's um, it's eternal. It is, we use the pitch to be together, now we do it in a different way. I remember when I was doing the infomercial, just talking about this, you know, getting around 26 miles and everybody got one. Everybody come around and, and uh, got one and you're absolutely right. It, it, it means as much as any grand final ring to be a part of that. Did, did you know a story about the medal? No, go on. So I'm obviously number seven. Yep. Turn upside down. You get an L for Leeds. Here we are, all these are we? We go. Heard it right here, mate. Next week, um, another special character is a big part of that journey. Doddy Weir. Um, when I heard about Rob, I got the text from him. I was up at the Sports Personality of the Year Aberdeen, where they were recognised Doddy Weir um, with, a, with a special award there, and he spoke. And it was the first time I'd really engaged my mind into what MND was. Um, really sadly, and they lost him week after he finished that final. Ultra 7 in 7. Next week, we're up at Magic Weekend. We're going to be wearing a really special shirt in recognition of Doddy Weir, Tartan one. It's a real good thing to do. Um, have you seen the shirt? Do you like it? And just give us a bit of an insight into your relationship with Doddy Weir. Yeah, well, I love the shirt. Yeah. And um, Doddy has put together uh, Doddy Head over the last couple of years. And I've signed up for the last two years. And when you sign up, you get your snood. <laughs> and and my Doddy Snood is exactly the tartan that is on class. The round on shirt next week, so um, I'm in it a fair bit. I like running in it. I'm I'm like I go in my cupboard and f f go in my drawer and find my snoods pile, but it's always my go-to because it reminds me of why I run, um, why we've done the challenges. The impact Doddy had on Rob was incredible and we lost a special guy but he leaves a, a huge legacy because of the campaigning he did you know to get government to release that 50 million to pull researchers and specialists around the country and bang their heads together and get them to work together instead of in silos um, he met prime ministers he met MPs he met all sorts of dignitaries and and shouted from the rooftops about, oh, we've got to find a cure and got to make a difference. And he he instilled a fight in Rob that Rob has got that sparkle in his eye every time I see him. So um, for the club to truly buy into that, you know, it, it makes you realise what a special club it is. And and we all know that. And we all, you know, having played here, we know, we know what that means. But actually, for Cathy, for Doddy's boys, um, it's an unbelievable thing that they get to see next week. The last message that I'll be left with yourself and Doddy was taking that full stop off the end of there is no cure in reference to MND. And a bit like, well, there's no cure, let's just look after everybody, which is a really important thing to do, obviously. But actually, that hope that you've instilled, certainly you know, from my perspective, and I know very little about it other than you know, to get behind you, keep running and supporting and, and banging that drum. Just going back to the, the book there, Kev, for the Rugby League purists, there is a lot of Rugby League information in there and you refer back to some of the adversities that you faced as well as a player. And it's probably, for most fans, hard to think back when did you know, Kev go through some of the dark times he did because there's that many good ones that we see in pictures. But talking about being left out of a Challenge Cup early on in your, your career, 2015, bit of a battle there. You referenced Brian McDermott as being your best ever coach, favourite coach, but had some real challenges dark times there. And then obviously moving that transition to rugby union was a big challenge earlier on, uh, you know, out of your comfort zone. 
Still is. <laughs> it is a little bit, but it's important to get that message out to top fans. Yeah, it, it is because without those tough moments, I don't think I find myself sat here today yeah. talking about a book, talking about um, what we've been able to do um, from an M&D perspective, the support we've been able to give Rob. I, I don't think, I think those tough times shape you as a person <coughs> and I don't shy away from talking about those tough times. Yeah. They are part of who I am. And during the time when you're going through it, you think you are in the worst <coughs> place possible. The world's ending and it can't get any worse. But actually the reality is, it's far worse for a lot of people out there. And the minute you can pull yourself together, you get out of bed, get out of that fetal position and face it and front it and get after it and, and attack it, which is a lot easier said than done. I know it is, I know it is. But the minute you can start to do that, things shrink, the problems shrink and you can overcome things a lot more easier. And I'd like to think all the challenges I faced in the sport, the adversity, the tough moments, they're being dropped, they're being left out, they're being injured, all those bits that nobody wants to face in the career but you have to, actually, I have no doubt this set us up for when we got into some dark moments during the last three years of the challenges, meant they were a lot easier to contend with because I'd had some experience of dealing with it. And a lot of the success as well, mate, um, you know, there's a contrast. And there's a little bit at the back of the book where you're outside Old Trafford, you've finished the Ultra 7 in 7, you've got an amazing team. You refer to them a lot, and I love it, this consistency around the importance of team. And when you retired from playing, it was the dream retirement almost. As far as rugby league goes, you know, the treble there, Old Trafford, it was a wonderful year. I didn't play in it, which brought a bit of sadness t to me, but in the same time, again, symbolically, I, I wouldn't change a thing, not in a million years. But you run to a hotel football, you've got to wake, it's the World Cup final, and, and there's two speeches that you gave in the last sort of 12 months that blew me away. One of them was spotty, when Rob got a really special award, and to be able to do that on BBC, live in front of the whole sporting world is one thing. And then the one that you give on the pitch there with Sally Nugent at Old Trafford, just really quick read a little bit. Through the windows of their high function suite, we gazed across the stadium uh, where I played so many gone finals. Exhausted but euphoric, the team buzzed around and took refreshments as we awaited our call to cross the road and make our way to the tunnel outside the dressing rooms. But first, I called the team together and told them, what we've done this week, you might never, ever do anything like this for the rest of your life. But what I will say to you is that you'll remember it for the rest of your life. And every time you see each person in this room now, wherever we are, you'll have an unbelievable bond and you'll know we've done something special together. Uh, we've helped a lot of people. I know I started off the week by saying, I hope you have the best week of your life. I can stand here and say, I have... I hope you guys have too. And then you obviously finish it off by saying, when I said best week of my life, in context, of course, uh, for all the right reasons. Just contrast that, Kev, you know, that moment with some of your playing careers lifting grand finals there to finish off a, an unbelievable trilogy of fundraising events at Old Trafford. Yeah, they're exactly the same. Right. right. The, the difference being with the 77 team is that they were all volunteers. That's that's the only difference. Like, and I know you, me, Rob, Danny, Kylie, JP, Baz, Keith. Like, you can keep going, right? You can keep throwing names. Actually, do you know would we have done what we did for nothing? Yeah, probably. I don't know if Keith would actually, but <laughs> pro pro probably the vast majority would have. Like, it was bigger than your pay packet, but what made it different with the seventy seven team was like. They, they volunteered, they took a week off work and like ran the bodies into the ground for something they believed in and that's what made it different. But actually the feeling of, of getting there, the euphoria, is, is exactly the same. Like you, you finish your playing career and you think, I'll never get anything like that again. Not, not, not at that magnitude. Um, the challenges have given us that. Even when we did... The first 77, seven, seven marathons, we finished outside the Farrows pub in Saddleworth, right? And there's maybe 300 people there. That feeling of finishing that day was as good as any grand final one because right. you've set out and you're not quite sure whether you're going to be good enough to do it. You're not quite sure whether you're tough enough to do it. There's a lot of self-doubt. There's a lot of pressure because you're on BBC Breakfast every morning. 
every man and his dog is supporting you, been absolutely brilliant, but it's the same as going through a season. You, you, you'd go through all them weekly rounds, you get to the playoffs, you win your playoffs, you get to a grand final, and you suddenly go in, am I good enough? Can I get there? And so actually when you do, that euphoria is exactly the same, that how special it is. When you know how much people have put in, whether it's been over a full season, or whether it's been under, over a week, or but the prep time that comes with that, and everyone plays their little little role within it. Like the seven and seven team is clockwork. Leeds Rhinos twenty fifteen is clockwork. The yeah. same. Everyone knows the rob, roles. Everyone knows the jobs. They bring a smile and they get on with it, and that's why it was so so special. I love how you make that description. I think that articulates the contrast, the difference between me and you. Like clockwork is who you are, isn't it? Process methodology you've changed a little bit uh, that you've evolved a do, bit. do you know it, it, it's um the, there is an element of i do shrug my shoulders at times and go can't control it we'll wing it we'll get on with it yeah um and i'm happy to roll with that i'm not like if, if something's not right i'd much rather it were right but if it's not there's not i don't throw everything out the pram i'm like right okay well i'll smile because actually, especially when we're in, especially when we've done the seven and seven stuff, yeah, yeah. like, and you might hear me blowing up or having some banter with someone, but inside that is my way of dealing with it, of smiling to myself, going, "Well, here we go, right? Okay, that's that's a little bit off, but how do we overcome it?" The extra mile we ran through the graveyard at twenty to one in the morning. The fact we ran one hundred and four miles. Tom, who navigated, he got a couple of gobfuls from me, but I'd say any moment, I wasn't that annoyed with him. Yeah. It was part of it, but the fact I vented it at him, like, was partly to humour myself as well and go, well, this is just what it is. This is this in um, Team Sky or Team Ineos who were getting Kipchoge through a two sub two hour marathon. This is us, and we got it out of the boot of a car and gone, right, let's go. So, I think when you do anything like that, there is an element of there's some things we've got to roll with. Um, and even stuff like the nutrition, you know, you can be, you can be so on your nutrition, but you've got to understand when you're doing something like that how important morale is. And if you go bland pasta with plain tomato sauce, yep. for seven evening meals, right, I kill the group. The group's done. <laughs> They're done. And you know, you know this. Do you know what I mean? You know, you you had a Mars duo during the six, the, the marathons. But if I said to you day six when you run that marathon, you can't have your Mars duo. You wouldn't have been pretty happy with me. <laughs> but you wanted it, so you have it, and it means you get a buzz and you carry on. I've seen a Pablo Picasso quote. It said, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. And I think that, that sums it up. You know, you've got the stability of, of the rules of process, but actually what comes out of that is your ability to evolve, be, be creative, uh, be abstract. Somebody who people might look at and expect to be just like you, but isn't, is his own person. It's another Sinfield, Jack Sinfield, who we've seen um, on a number of occasions now, is very much part of the first team group. There's an interesting chapter in there when you're talking about Jack and Sam, and you, you reference in particular his, his debut, which for completely different reasons, had different emotional memories for you, proud dad, seeing him grow up and work hard for me, one of the most extreme moments of my life, you know, back up against the wall, but really honoured to be able to give him that debut as well. Uh, how proud are you of, of seeing Jack do what he's done in, in his own way as well? Yeah, I, I, I'm really proud of both of them in yeah. different ways. Um, actually, it was this room uh, when you invited me in to present him with his, his debut shirt and I couldn't get my words out, could I? I was, I was so choked up. Um, we want your best for your kids and... Um, I want him to chase his dreams, I want Sam to chase his dreams and me and Jane will support wherever and however and um, in which way we can. The fact he wants to be a rugby player, the fact he wants to play for Leeds Rhinos, of course it means a lot to me, do you know what I mean? It's It's been his club, his first ever game, he was three week old and he's at 2004 Grand Final and it's well, that's as soon as he could start to understand he was rugby and Rhinos and so to see him is, yeah, we're really proud. He knows the journey in front of him. He knows how tough it is. He's almost lived, well, he has, he's lived it with me. He knows, he knows 
Um, he's got a good temperament and um, he wor he's worked incredibly hard and he'll continue to. And we'll see. Yeah, fascinating. I do love watching him. Just really quickly, an extended version of uh, Box 2 here, but a lot of people might Google Kevin Chinfield. They'll come across this year. Currently, the England Rugby Union assistant coach, we've not even mentioned Rugby Union, heading towards the World Cup. It's one of the biggest sporting offices there is. Kev, just really quickly to finish, give us an insight into what the, the near future looks like and how you're preparing for a World Cup. Yeah, it's really exciting. It is um, it's very, very different to league. Like The international campaigns are, are full on. And I'm not saying ours weren't, but in terms of the length, like, and everything's in London, so if you get a day where you can come home, like you realise it's four hours to get home and it's four hours to come back, so it's different to being in Camp in Leeds or Manchester and you know, you, you're only a short journey. So it's different. But actually, um, we go in camp um, sort of mid-June and I'm pretty much gone until the end of October. All being well, things go well, which is just short of five months. Like, it's a fair old stint, it's a fair old amount of time to be away from home yeah. and it's a fair old amount of time to be with the team and the coaching staff but what it does do is give us a brilliant amount of time to build friendships and work incredibly hard before the World Cup and we'll give it our best shot. Good on you and uh, last but certainly not least yourself and uh, Rob Burrow up for an award, television award and there's an opportunity to vote. Do you want to give us a bit of an insight how we can support you both? Um, can I change this? I've nearly butted in before. Yeah, Actually course. support Rob. All right. right. That's that's the big message. Right. Wayne Bennett said to me um, not so long ago, don't get stuck in the middle of a donut. And what he was talking about is if you're fighting on two fronts, you'll end up with nothing. Um, so we can't fight on two fronts. We fight on one front, we fight for Rob, we vote for Rob, and we get him to win this award. I don't think I can beat that. What a special guy. Typical, as always, Kevin Sinfield thinking about his teammates, doing it for a mate with a mate. Thanks for joining us. Hope you'll join us again next week. Have a wonderful weekend.